It's time for Success in Real Estate with Frankie Griffin, owner and broker in charge of the Palmetto Success Team, certified residential specialist, accredited buyer representative, military relocation professional, real estate appraiser, and author of Success in Real Estate. If you are interested in buying or selling a home, investing in real estate, or having your home appraised, you will enjoy Success in Real Estate. Now, here's Frankie Griffin. So what is market value? That's the question we're going to be dealing with a, a large part of today. Thank you for joining us to on Success in Real Estate. We'd love to hear from you. If you have any questions, you can give us a call. The number here in studio is 799-8255. Again, 799-8255 or TALK. That helps a lot of people remember it. 799-TALK. But I do want to talk about the the market value. What is market value? Because this is a I got a or at least quite a few emails after last week's show asking just I mean what is market value? And because you know you hear people ask all the time or or at least interested in knowing what the value of their home is and. You know, how can an appraiser come out and appraise the home for one value and then another appraiser come out and, and appraise it for a, a different value? And, and then if I, have, if I have a house under contract, and here's the big question I was getting last week, quite frankly. If the house is under contract and the appraisal is being done for the bank, then how come the Almost, or well, about 99% of the time, the appraisal comes back at just exactly what the contract price was. Um, uh, I get that. That's a pretty, that's a good question. And there's really a good answer for that, for the most part. And, and those are some of the things that we want to talk about and discuss today. I will just tell you, there are several different types of value. So depending on what the appraiser was asked to do, uh, the function of the appraisal and the purpose of the appraisal, all that's going to play into the value because there there can be, in fact, there are several different types of value. Well, in real estate, obviously, if you're wanting to sell your home or buy a home, really the value that we're most concerned about and really the only one we care about is market value. And I went ahead, in fact, I wrote down the definition, according to the Appraisal Institute, exactly what market value is. So here's market value, and then we'll discuss it. But it says it's the most probable price which a property should bring in a competitive and open market under all conditions requisite to a fair sale, buyer and seller, each acting prudently, knowledgeably, and assuming the price is not affected by undue stimulus. So that's the definition. Uh, should be a piece of cake. If that was not clear, I don't know if I, what we can do to help you. Um, now let's talk about this a little bit. Um, obviously, well, let's break it down. The first thing here, it says, the most probable price the property should bring in a competitive and open market. And basically what we have what we're looking for, at least some of the things we're looking for here, what kind of exposure time has this property had to the market? Because that's going to be important. As a real estate agent, we, we look at um, or we call it days on the market. And but but sometimes the days on the market may not truly reflect um, the adequate market exposure time because see here here's something that again we 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 have to consider uh, certainly weighs in to the overall value but you know if you've got a let's say average days on the market is 115 days and and by the way a little bit later in the show we're going to talk about some of the market statistics as as they are right now but if the average days on the market is around 115 days, um, let's say three to three and a half months, and then we see a property for sale, or maybe that has closed, um, but it, it was on the market for, gosh, say 250, 300 days. Uh, uh, well, that is indicative of the house being overpriced. 
Um, I mean, that's if it's still sitting there beyond the average days on the market and, and given the market conditions, and I understand there's a lot of things that go into that market absorption rate, but, you know, once you start going over that time, then it's a good idea to start refocusing and look at the price. You, you are more than likely overpriced. But then what about these houses that sell for that sell or at least go under contract in, in a week and sometimes less than that? Well, does that provide adequate exposure to the market? Well, obviously no. If, it, if it's only been on the market for two or three days when, when, it, when it went under contract, not a lot of market exposure there. So one one theory could be that the house was underpriced. Uh, it, it went so quick, it must be priced too cheaply. Now, I'm just going to tell you, that's not always the case. So if anybody's going to call in, we'd love to hear from you. But let me just go ahead and say now, I, I get that. Just because it uh, went under contract very quickly, things that happens occasionally. Um, and, and sometimes we are fortunate to get it priced just right and it sold just that quick. But a lot of times it can indicate that it's underpriced. So anyway, got to have a competitive market. says that the conditions must be requisite to a fair sale, which means the buyer and the seller are acting prudently and knowledgeably and assuming the price is not affected by undue stimulus. Now, what kind of things can affect the stimulus of the sales price? Well, any number of things. Um, but here's a few things that we have to consider as an appraiser. First of all, it says the buyer and the seller must be typically motivated. And, and you're, you'll hear appraisers use the word typical an awful lot because that's what we keep referring to. Is this a typical sale? Is this a typical buyer? Is it a typical transaction? Because if it's not typical, then there was something that had, or may I say, un, there was some undue stimulus that resulted in the transfer of that property. Um, it could be, for example, if I were selling my house to my son, um, there's a theory that I might give him a little bit better deal or a little bit better price than I would selling it to, say, Jerry here, this film in the show. Um, I can tell you that won't be the case in my situation, but... But that is undue stimulus. There's some families involved and could create that undue stimulus. If you're having any issues with your heating and air unit, which now is not a good time to have problems with your air conditioning unit, um, but you need to call Tim Mosley with Carolina Conditions. He does an awesome job. He was, in fact, he was out at my house this past week cleaning my the ducts in my house, which I, I like to have done from time to time. And you can all, you can just tell it. As soon as I got home uh, that afternoon, you could tell. I knew that my ducts had been clean. It just smelled cleaner. It was fresher in the house. It's, you're not blowing all that dust and and. Um, heaven knows what all kind of stuff's in these ducks, and I've told them I don't even want to know. Just clean it out and haul it off, whatever it is in there. And does such a great job. But Tim Mosley with Carolina Conditions, that's who you need to call if you have any issues with your duct work, your heating and air system. You can go on my website, again, frankiegriffin.com, www.frankiegriffin.com. And, there, and just click on the, I've got a real estate partners page. You can click on it and you'll find Carolina Conditions along with all our other real estate partners. And they do such an awesome job. Well, we're talking about this market value, um, appraising, how appraisers come up with the value that they have, in fact, come up with. Love to answer any questions you may have. If you have any, you can certainly give me a call at 799 Eight two five five again seven nine nine eighty two fifty five, and we'll do our very best to talk to you or or uh, or to work out any questions you may have. All right, so we were talking about this market value, and this is what typically most residential property owners are looking for because we're either thinking about buying or selling in most cases, and we have to make sure that the deal that we're looking at. Um, does not have any undue stimulus is what we were talking about before the break. And there could be any number of things that could do that. Um, obviously, 
And by the way, this um, we're looking for this not only in the subject property or, or the property that maybe you own and you're trying to get the value for, but we're looking for that type of information with the comparable sales also. Uh, we got to make sure that, yeah, might have a similar property that has sold here nearby. That would typically be a comparable property, but there could be some undue stimulus with it. You know, you know for example, if it was, um, yeah, it sold, but it sold at a foreclosure sale. Um, that's not typical of market value. There are other things that will will play into that, which would basically render that particular comp um, not similar. So we can't use it. We might have to throw that out. But a lot of times we're also looking at uh, creative financing. And i got to tell you, home buyers and sellers today are really, really creative in many cases when it comes to the financing. Um, and, and I don't have a problem with that, especially as a realtor. Um, we we want to make sure we can protect both parties and get everybody happy. And sometimes it, it requires the creative financing. But, um, but a very common thing that appraisers have to look at are seller concessions. Uh, for example, if the seller's paying $4,000, $5,000 in closing cost for the buyer, then that's an adjustment that has to be made because the theory is if you're paying, say, $5,000 in closing cost, then the assumption is you increase the price of the house to absorb that cost. Um, now, I understand a lot of sales say, but that's not the case. That's not what we did. Well, I get that, but um, we have to account for that concession. Uh, and so it's going to count as an adjustment. Um, one way or another, it's going to count. And again, same thing on the comparable properties. In fact, while I'm on that, I would appreciate um, for any, and I know we have a lot of real estate agents listen to our show, and I am so thankful for that. I love all our realtor friends. Um, but one thing that would be very, very helpful, um, not only but in the realtor community, but also especially for appraisers, when a house closes and it has been sold, the agent goes into the multiple listing surface and has to close it out. So we know that property is not available. Well, there are some very critical questions that the MLS ask about the closing. Um, but one particular question, which is not a mandatory field, so a lot of agents just leave this blank, but the field is asking who paid the closing cost. Did the buyer pay theirs and the seller pay theirs? Did the seller pay theirs and the buyers? Um, and if the seller did pay any portion of the buyers, then how much did they pay? Um, I wish more agents would fill that information out. It would make everybody, it, it, it makes the appraising of properties much more reliable. Because as an appraiser, I, have to, I, have to, I need to know that information. And if I've got a comparable where the seller paid um, these concessions and I don't know about it, it can have an adverse effect on the, on the property that I'm currently appraising. And so anyway, fill it out. There's a reason these blanks are there and it's asking these questions. So it would be very helpful to go ahead and fill that stuff out. We need to know that. All right, Let, I did want to also go into some other components of an appraisal. In fact, I mentioned last week, for those that go forward and actually get an appraisal or have an appraisal done on their property, this is a, it's a very formal process or formal report versus a market analysis that a real estate agent may do, which is a informal process. Because there's a lot of things that has to go into an appraisal that a market analysis does not consider at all. Um, and some of the, these things, now some of these things agents do look at, so I, I didn't mean to say they don't ever look at them, so I, I don't want to get that call. But, all right. so, but one of the things I have to look at is a very detailed analysis and description of not only the property itself, but the neighborhood also. What is the makeup of that neighborhood? Uh, what percentage of this area is is single family? Uh, what percent of it might be multifamily? Uh, what percent of it might actually be 
uh, commercial, and but all the all of these things will certainly play into the to the bottom line to determine the value. So and that and it's very time consuming looking up this information. Another thing we have to look at is the zoning. Uh, the first question I need to determine about this property is, is your property currently being used at its highest and best use? Um, you know, for example, if it's now, if you've got a residential home and it's zoned residential, then that's highest and best use. Um, there's nothing else you can use or do with that property. But if you have a residential home, and maybe it has since been rezoned commercial. Well, then we we may very well have to determine it's not currently being used at its highest and best use, which could mean it's not going to appraise at the highest and best use. So those are some things we got to consider also. But right now, let's go to our phone lines real quick where we got Dustin. How you doing, Dustin? Hey, Frankie. How you doing? This is Dustin, Resource Realty Group. Awesome. Good to hear from you, Dustin. We've got about a minute, so I wanted, to, I wanted to bring you on real quick. I'll be real brief. I just wanted to, to just get your opinion on the um, idea of not supplying the sales contract to an appraiser um, because, ironically, as you probably well know, over 90% of the time, the, the appraised value comes back almost identical to the sales price. Yep, and that's something I, um, I do want to talk about. Dustin called in, a realtor here in the Midlands area, asking the very common question, get it all the time, um, why is it that the appraiser almost always comes back at, at almost exactly what the contract price is? And if there's any difference between the appraisal and the contract price, then typically it's just it's maybe a thousand or two thousand dollars, but it's pretty much it's very close to the same. And there's actually a good answer for that. And in fact, I'm um, and during the break I actually called my partner, buddy, friend of mine, uh, Todd Feaster. He is also a certified appraiser and. Um, was wanting him to call in and help us with that, and he said, and he will, so he'll be calling in here in the next couple of minutes. And But in the meantime, I did want to, and, but anyway, Dustin, I'm, I haven't forgotten your question. I, I promise you I'm going to answer it. But uh, let me hit a couple things before we even get into that. Um, you know, one, actually, I think Todd is probably calling in as we speak. So is that Todd, Brian? Awesome. Well, let's go ahead and talk to Todd. Todd, you with us, brother? Good morning, sir. How are you? Oh, this is a fine day today. It's, in fact, um, I know you're out on the road and working, and, and I appreciate you doing this for me. But Oh, no problem. Um, no problem. My pleasure. And I know it's hot out there, so I hope your air conditioner is working. It, it's not hot in Charleston. It's uh, overcast and rain. <laughs> oh, you're in Charleston? Yeah. Good yep. grief. But anyway, yeah. Todd um, had a call, real estate agent called in and was asking why. Why does the appraisal invariably come back at the same amount as the contract price? And, and, and you know, that's a question you and I both get all the time. So We do. And you've got an excellent answer, so I wanted to hear it. Well, the, the first reason, well, well, the first thing that I would point out is this this specific agent apparently haven't hasn't we haven't dealt with him recently because it seems like we can't get anywhere near uh, contract <laughs> prices here recently. Yeah. Um, but the contract price it is not an indication of market value, not of a singular property by itself. Uh, in the case where there are plenty of comparables and there's been a lot of negotiation and the buyers looked around and and made his choices wisely there's a very good chance that the contract price will also match the market value for that property. Mm -hmm. In the cases where it doesn't, it's because you know maybe somebody's paying too much for something. You know, there are a lot of different reasons why those things don't match, but it, they don't match a lot more often than than I think folks are being led to believe. Right. Well, you know, Todd, and, and I and I know you're in Charleston, so I, I don't think... No, no, I'm, we, I'm fine, I'm fine. But I don't think we pick up in Charleston, so I'm guessing you didn't listen 
to the first part of the show. Oh, no, no. I, I didn't hear. I didn't get yeah. to hear any of it. I sure well, did. some of the things I mentioned, Todd, and, and you can certainly comment on it, but, you know, I mentioned that, you know, market value, and, and I read the definition, but, you know, it's got a lot to do with what the typical buyer right. is willing to pay with a typical right. seller without any undue influence involved. Right. And so when you have so when there is a contract or the property's under contract and there's no evidence of undue influence of any kind, we have adequate market exposure, then that goes a long ways to suggesting what that market value would be. Sure, absolutely. Um, you know, when we analyze it and that's the purpose in getting the, the, a copy of the contract is so that the appraiser can make that analysis so that he can measure uh, this transaction and the motivations of the buyers and the sellers versus what is typical for properties in that specific market area, whether that market area is, is as small as a, a specific subdivision or whether that market area is all of Lexington County or all of Richland County. Uh, it, it gives the appraiser a chance to look at that transaction and measure are the buyer and seller acting in what they perceive to be their own best interest? Are they both educated to the process? Has the property had a reasonable amount of exposure to the market? All those things, all those things come together, and uh, as is the case with the word typical, typical is what happens more often than not. So when all of those are met, it, it's a very good indication that that's, that's a good pointer toward fair market value. And Todd, you're, I mean, that's exactly right. I mean, I could certainly couldn't have answered it any better, and that's why I've got you. So when the agent <laughs> might say 90 to 95 percent of the appraisals come back right at the contract price, then basically the and and I, maybe the argument's not a good word, but um, but that pretty much indicates that 90 to 95 percent of the contracts meet the requirement of market value. Sure, sure. Um, agents are doing a good job pricing properties, and buyer's agents are doing a good job negotiating. Uh, I believe that's why the sales price to list price ratio has stayed so stable over, even through all of this tumult, all of the bad news about the real estate industry. Mm -hmm. All of that has, has stayed very level in, in the metropolitan market. Now, you do have some where folks just want entirely too much for something, and they found an agent that'll list it, list it for that. And, and those, are the, those are the same people who will say, well, we've got a contract. What do you mean it's not worth 800000 <laughs> yeah. Well, it's not. There's, you're the only person in the world that thinks this is worth this much. Right. Uh, you know, you, you've seen it enough from the appraisal side of it to know that that the, the appraisal certainly does not always come back at the price on the contract. Yeah. Uh, it will come back very similar or close in most cases, again, for the same reasons we just said. Most agents are doing a good job pricing their properties, and the appraiser is basically going back through that and making sure that it meets all of the items requisite with, it, with what's considered a fair sale or an arm's length transaction. Right, and, and and the word we kept hitting on in the first couple of segments was the word typical. And just because you have one buyer willing to pay that enormous price, well, that's not right. – or at least the market does not indicate that being typical. It does not. It does not. And and whether that's somebody over – you know, far overpaying for the area or far underpaying in the case of a foreclosure um, – that's our job is to weed through all of that and, and pull those sales out of there where the buyer and seller are not typically motivated. Right. And and typically being all the reasons that, that we went over. They're not they're not facing they're not getting put out. They're not selling because of a job transfer. It's it's an actual fair market arms length transaction. Well Todd, I know you're busy. And I appreciate you calling in, taking time, and um, my pleasure, Frankie. Any any time, anything I can, anything I can do to help you, just call. All right, buddy. Go make some more money. 
I'm on the way, baby. <laughs> All right, have a good one. Thanks, Frank. All right, we'll see, see you. All right, um, again, that's Todd Feaster. He's uh, my partner doing uh, – we – work together doing appraisals and um, we're both also real estate agents so uh, we we sort of do a little bit of both and, and enjoy doing all of it um, I absolutely love real estate and and every facet of it so it's all fascinating to me but hopefully Dustin that answered your question and, and it's a very common question and I got uh, two or three emails last week asking the exact same question so glad we could get that answered and or at least hope it did but some other things the um, the appraisal must do is the, uh, the comparable properties have to, you know, as an appraiser, I have to not only find comparable properties, but I have to go visit. I have to go see all the comparables, both those that have closed and those that are currently listed and on the market, and uh, which goes a long ways towards why, you know, I get people say, well, why do you charge so much? What's, why is it so expensive to have an appraisal done? Because it, it takes a lot of time, money, gas, I actually have to go visit all of these properties. So that's what we've got to do. And really, the bit, right now, the biggest difference between having an appraisal and a just a market analysis from um, that a real estate agent might do. And a few more things I just want to touch on. Then I want to get into some market statistics. But we'd love to hear from you. 799-8255. 799-8255 if you do have any questions. Um, but some of the other things that are included in an appraisal. Obviously, the property has to be measured. So you will have a sketch of the property. And um, in fact, our attorney, Andy Owen, has, has commented on this a number of times. Um, in fact, it's of his opinion that agents need to be very, very careful when trying to measure the house, if and certainly if they don't know what they're doing. Um, you know, measuring is not that hard, again, if you know what you're doing. Uh, but neither is riding a bike. Uh, riding a bike's not that hard once you learn how to do it. But, but you know, the value of real estate, or at least residential homes, is based on the square footage analysis. So that's going to play a large role into the value. And as the homeowner, the last thing you need is to market your home as a as having a certain amount of square footage, and then find out once it goes under contract that square footage is not there. Um, now that's bad enough. It would be even worse to find out that the square footage is not there after it sells. Um, you're going to have a lot of problems here. If that should happen. So um, I think it's a good idea. Every property should be measured by somebody that knows what they're doing. Um, also in the appraisal, it's going to include um, some environmental notes. Um, there are certain things that the appraiser will have to indicate in, in the appraisal concerning environmental such as, you know, water. Is it a, um, have you got a well or is it public water? Same thing with your sanitary waste. Is, there, is it on a septic system or some kind of public or community system? Is there any soil contamination present? Asbestos. Um, radon, if we have any knowledge of that. Um, USTs, or short for underground storage tanks. Uh, a lot of comment has to be made about those if they're present. Lead-based paint. Of course, lead-based paint is likely in any house built prior to 1978. Um, so if it is a house prior to 78, we do have to make some comments about that. A couple other things the appraisal will consist of. Um, the deed. Obviously, we have to make sure of who owns the property. Um, to, to establish marketable title, we have to, first of all, we got to know who, that the person trying to market it and sell it, we got to make sure that they actually own it and they have marketable title and um, the right to sell it. So all that has to be part of the appraisal. We'll include a plat of the property, um, which would show, at least at the time that survey was done, 
any easements or potential encroachments. And, and, and this kind of stuff will certainly impact value. In fact, I can't tell you how many times um, that has come back to just kill deals. Where, yeah, we, you had it priced right, it uh, went under contract, everybody's happy until we get the appraisal back and look at the plat and we find out that there are encroachments and because of that encroachment may not be able to get title insurance, um, which will kill the deal um, in a lot of cases. We, um, and then last thing I'll just sort of touch on is we also include a flood map. So we have to indicate whether the property is in a flood zone or not. That's going to be another significant issue because if it's in a flood zone, um, I would recommend you probably need some flood insurance. Not going to be very cheap. That can certainly impact what a buyer could do. And, you know, as the seller, I can understand some of the, you know, if this, any of this stuff exists, I know the, the mindset is I really don't want to know about it. Uh, don't want to hear about it, but I can tell you, and, you, and I know you've heard me say this several times, but um, sellers, bad news will not get better with time. So if we have the issue, then it's best to let's discover it right now, let's deal with it, and um, get it taken care of. But uh, a big thank you to all the realtors that have been calling us to come out and appraise properties that they are listing or putting on the market. Um, I'm getting very good feedback. It's a very good negotiating tool, plus you know what you have and what you can market once you get the appraisal done. So I'd love to help you with that if you're thinking about selling your home, and especially if you're selling your home by owner. I think you'll find an appraisal to be extremely valuable. Go ahead and get that done. Give me a call. I'd love to help you out. Um, and I'll give you out my number in a minute, but I've only got probably about a minute left in the program. But I wanted to just throw out a few market statistics. And again, now these are statistics um, year to date, January through the end of May. And I'm comparing this time with the exact same time of last year in 2013. Um, so for example, in 2013, January to May, we listed just over 7,400 houses compared to this year over 7,800 houses, so about 400 difference. We had an average list price in 2013 of about 189000 where the average list price today, this year, is just over 200000 so it is picking up. Um, sales price has actually picked up. It's gone from 164,000 to almost 165,000. Days on the market has dropped from 115 to 103. So those are some of the statistics. Um, wish we had more time to talk about it, but we are just about out of time. Thank you so much for joining us today. Hope you have a great weekend. Look forward to talking to you some more next week on success in real estate on the point.